Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Android Central Podcast. It's episode number 101, 101, for Thursday, July 5th, 2012. I'm Phil Nickinson. I'm your host for this little show and the editor of AndroidCentral.com, and we got a whole lot to talk about. I'm just going to get to it. Screw the preamble. Normal uh, monologue that I would do, standing up, stand-up monologue. We're going to skip that for good reasons, I guess. And with us tonight, we have Jerry Hildenbrand from the site. Hey, everybody, what's happening? And from the Android Central Forums, we have Corey Streeter. Hey, everybody. From jolly old England, it's Alex Doby. Hey, everyone. And back for the first time, and I don't know how long, it's been quite a while, you know him as a cell phone jockey, it's Mickey Papillon. My name is Mickey, and I have now ridded a Nexus. Dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to Mickey in a minute. Oh, man. If it's your first time here, so <laughs> here's the deal. We do this live most Thursday nights. I'm not going to say every Thursday night, but a lot of Thursday nights we do it live. Sometimes we do it uh, live on location, like last week from Google I.O., which is always fun, podcasting from a hotel room. And so tonight we're back in our normal show with our normal crew, and it's been a long time since we've all been together. Corey, what are you drinking tonight, man? I am drinking Etun du Cider Chapel. Oh, yeah. Damn. Slightly. It's cider. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so let's recap Google I.O. maybe. So Jerry, Alex, and I were all in San Francisco last week and just had a hell of a time. Really, really good conference. If you don't know what Google I.O. is, it's their yearly developer conference. Um, you probably know it more as where we get new and cool Android stuff, but it's actually a lot more than that. It's Chrome. It's Android. It's everything Google does, and it's really geared for developers. I I wrote a little bit about it. Like I'm in way over my head. I'm a journalist, right? I don't do code. But there's so much there to learn. I think Jerry probably gets more out of it than I do, right? Uh, I don't know about that. I just know I get a lot out of it. <laughs> oh, really, really good stuff, though. But yes, we mm -hmm. did get Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. We are running it on the Galaxy Nexus already. And it has been ported to uh, other devices, but Galaxy Nexus is the only one it's officially on. Well, I, I take that back. It's also on the uh, Nexus 7, the new tablet that we also got. We knew it was coming. Here it is. I've got it. We're going to have our review up shortly, hopefully tomorrow or by the weekend. Uh, real quick, I like the hell out of it. I've been using this tablet exclusively since we got it. I haven't even picked up the iPad, which is saying something. I really do like the size. And I've been using the Kindle Fire a lot, too, actually. Alex Hess is there. I really do like the size. It's fast. Jelly Bean is nice on it. Um, we had talked previously about how we don't need just another Android tablet from Google. Like we, They couldn't afford that. So I want to ask all you guys, and, and Corey and Mickey, you too, even though you, you don't have it. Uh, Jerry, is this just another Android tablet? And if, if so, why? And if not, why? Yeah, I think it is. Um, oh! I, I, I know it's a, a portal to the new Google Play. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just, I, I think the only real differentiating factor here is the price. You know, what you're getting I, for but for your 200 bucks. I think that that in itself means it's more than just another Android tablet. That That is the differentiator. Yeah. That and Google Play. Um, and we'll get on to whether that kind of applies internationally in a bit, I guess. But um, the fact that you can get this quality of tablet um, for $200 or 160 pounds is a big deal. Uh, and that's more than you could say for any Android tablet released in the past year. I think I'm just going to have to disagree with Jerry now since he owes me a drink. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think I think we both agree, but uh, I just I don't think that was enough. Hmm. What else would it take, Jerry? <sighs> I don't know, Phil. <laughs> I you know, I that's. We, we couldn't think of what it would take before Google I.O. And I didn't really see yeah. anything in Google I.O. that says, now you have to go buy an Android tablet. I, think uh, I what wish I'm, I had. Some of what I'm seeing here is a little trickery on the eyes, right? So the main home screen, I'm looking at it here. You've got a really nice widget showing you my books, my magazines, my uh, recommended books, recommended magazines. And they look really good, right? It, it makes it look like... Mm -hmm. Not like the Kindle Fire, but you know that there's content. You know that this does something. Pan over one, and you've got my library. So I'm seeing books and music and, and more books and magazines. Um, and the whole thing looks really good. So I think I'm being tricked a little bit into thinking that there's more here that might not have been here before, 
when truthfully all that's new is magazines, right? Right. On TV. TV. And, well, the, and TV, yeah. So, so I, I kind of like to hear your guys' perspective on this because I've only seen it on camera. And I've experienced Jelly Bean myself on the Galaxy Nexus. But I... It seems to me one important thing is, is every tablet I've picked up in the past has sort of a lag to it. The the experience hasn't been smooth and crisp and, you know, like it just, it's been kind of a frustrating experience. So if the, if Jelly Bean on the tablet is as good as it is on the Galaxy Nexus, I think now the average consumer will pick that up and go, oh, this, this feels good. It operates really fast and it's very media centric as well, which is uh, something that I think is important to sort of focus on one thing and do it really well. Yeah. If anything, I'd even say it's a little bit faster than the Galaxy Nexus. Mm-hmm. Yes. With I was just going to say the same thing. It seems faster somehow. It is and I guess the, the extra to, two cores are going to help, right? So. Right. It, it is important to remember, though, that Jelly Bean in its current form is pre-release still. So it's And, and it's yeah. really good. That's not to say there are bugs all mm. over the place because I mean, I've seen like a couple small things, but no big deal. But this is not a shipping operating system yet. That's why that's why we don't have code, right? Right, right. Uh, someone, someone in the chat is asking about volume. Volume is actually really high on the uh, Nexus Seven compared to the Galaxy Nexus. So that's that's right, it's I a guess little a hard too high. Thing. You can I can make it. It is a little. It, it, it is a little bit way. distorted. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's two hundred bucks, right? I mean, that's a really sure, good price point. <laughs> yeah, you. Right. you, you well, and, and, and as I wrote, as I wrote last week, um, I think for me the tipping point is. It can do everything the Kindle Fire does, and then more. It it will yeah. run, you know. It, it won't just do the Kindle ecosystem, right? You can put Barnes and Noble on it. You've got Google Play, so you've got the three major ecosystems all in one tablet, and that's a big deal for me. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the chat room's asking about burn in. So th- this is actually <laughs> something Jerry and I talked about last week. I haven't seen it now. It, it it's it's another one of those things I don't think we can call a bug, right? And we're not going to call it a feature. It's just a side effect of these IPS displays, mm. right? Right. You can get and a then, little bit of ghosting on the display. I haven't actually noticed it. Now, Jerry asked me about it the other uh, the other day in San Francisco. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he swears he'll see the keyboard, like, ghost and, and stay, you know, the image will still be on the screen for just a couple seconds. Mm-hmm. This hasn't bothered me at all. Mm. That's not just IPS, though. You get that yeah. a little bit on low, low light levels on AMOLED. That was on, yeah. on this Galaxy yeah. Nexus yeah. many a time. But, uh, yeah. Phil, do you, if, if you have that link handy again, we'll put it in the show notes. Uh, IBM does a good job explaining it because one of their ThinkPads is affected. And, and this is, it works as intended, even though we may not like it. Right. And it's just another one of those things. Now, I think Android Police or somebody did a big scary post this week about how it's subject to burn in and they did a test with two minutes of static image turned all the way up and they did say no look it'll you know do the at lower levels too but it, here's how we wanted you to really see it so they kind of gave you the extreme i've been using this for a week haven't noticed it once yeah. maybe if you know maybe if i saw it, it bug the hell out of me from there on out i don't know but i haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it on the ipad and supposedly it happens on the ipad sometimes um, it's just not something that has ever, ever bothered me. Then again, I'm also not like looking for things to worry about. So, right. And, and yeah. you know what? You have to look for things on that little tablet. You it's really do. Very well designed and well built. The only like weird quirk that I've noticed, and actually, I think it might have solided up, it solided, I'm making up words, solidified a little bit, was the display <laughs> I felt was rocking in the, in the case a little bit. Like if, because I hold it on the edges, right? So when my thumb would press into it, I could feel it move a little bit. I'm not feeling it. Do it. No, maybe uh, I did. But again, pre-production hardware, pre-production software, and I'm willing to bet these had just kind of gotten you know, off the line and the glue might not be there. Or maybe there's not glue. I think there's clips in these. <laughs> but I, I felt well, the, 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 the finalized one. Of, go on. No, no, no. I was going to say the final, um, the ones that are actually going to be shipping from the Play Store have a different trim, they have a different back. So, um, mm. again, this, the, the, the actual build quality is going to be pretty different when you actually get these shipping. These are limited edition uh, editions. Yeah. So, and in fact, I had a gray one. Uh, Google gave us review units, too, and I, I took them back. I'm like, I already have one. I don't need to carry more stuff. But thank you, Google. Um, so I have seen the gray one. I tell you, I actually like the, the white better. I think the white looks really good. Mm. Uh, yeah. A couple other things we need to talk about it though, Jerry. One is that little micro USB plug down there. It doesn't do some of the things we'd expect it to, right? Right. 
Uh, well, his, his actually, well, I'll, I'll let Jerry finish, then I'll do my. I say there's there's no built in solution for HDMI output, uh, or or any type of video output, mm-hmm. and there's no built in solution for USB host, and that's got a lot well, of people up in arms. Well, but there is, but it doesn't support um, file um, system mounting. You can plug a keyboard and mouse, and it'll be just fine with it. Right, right. Well, yeah, I I was talking uh, thumb drives and. Yeah, that sort of thing. I think that's, and, uh, that's an AOSP thing more than anything, isn't it? Uh, the Nexus well, does uh, input devices, but not storage devices. There was a, a post on Google Plus from uh, Brian Switland, I think. Uh, was the, the functionality is there? There's APIs. Any app developer could write an app that builds in FAT32 and uses the USB storage API, and you can plug it in, and it'll work in his app. Uh, and then Romain Guy kicked in. The reason that it wasn't included in stock is because there's no elegant and simple UI solution. Once you hmm. plug a thumb drive in, I mean, they they said that a file browser just isn't a, a Yeah, that's something device. I don't want to do. They already said that. So, um, the other yeah. thing is, um, again, this is pre, pre-production pre software. Uh, we've got, obviously got Pogo Pins for some kind of dock down here. Um, it's entirely possible that um, the shipping software for this or some kind of future update is going to have support for um, NHL, which is the other thing which isn't supported uh, on the uh, the IO models. Right. I mean, it's... I, I don't know. I didn't look at the teardown. It, it may... The hardware may support it as is, and it's just a software mm. issue. I don't, I don't well, Te- know. Well, Tegra definitely does, but it's a case of how, how that's tied right. into yeah. the other stuff. But, uh, I tell you, and, 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 and here's a good segue maybe, but one reason, one way you could argue against having output is because of the Nexus Q. That's sure. what I was just yeah. going to say, yep. So the Nexus you know, Q, I, if you haven't seen it, is this really cool, I don't have it in here, it's out in my living room, this really cool sphere, this orb, with this awesome little light around the uh, equator, and this one little bright light that shines out the front of it. And it's not... <laughs> Jerry, how would you describe this? It's not like Google TV. It, it actually does a little bit less. It is. Uh, I... It's a media streamer. It streams the media that's on your phone, but it doesn't stream right. it from your phone. It streams it from your Google account. Which is and, another and I can't, big difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't think, think of any other way to describe it. That, that's the problem. Yeah. Google can't it's an accessory, it isn't it? It's an accessory. I, I watched their videos. I watched both mm-hmm. of them. It's eight minutes, and I still didn't know what the hell it was. I, I was <laughs> like, what is this thing? They have to come up with a better way of articulating what this product is, or it's going to fail. Corey, when you get one in your I hands, think, you're going to love it. I'll tell you that right now. When you get it in your hands, it makes sense. Mickey, mm. what did you think when you when you saw the Q? I thought it was. Uh, I, 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 first of all, I thought it was overpriced, but um, you know, nonetheless, I think there's a you know there's a real um, you know need for this type of thing on the Android side as well, and so I'm glad that Google was able to come out with something that can fulfill that need. But um, you know, honestly, most of what uh, you're going to be looking to do is going to be, I would guess, streaming video, and I'm not sure that this, and maybe eventually when we get the APIs that'll do it, that this will. Um, you know, do everything that we're looking for. I, I look at what the Apple TV does and taking an iOS device and being able to airplay things uh, over to an Apple TV totally justifies the the purchase of that. I, I don't quite see that yet where I can have, say, a network drive um, and then be able to stream something from a network drive through um, an Android device over to it. Am I misunderstanding something that they're doing yet? Because what I understood was like Google Music and YouTube and maybe videos that you already have on it. Now, I suppose possibly it, it, am I am I wrong about that? Uh, Everything I, I streams think... comes from Google Play as I understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I it, think here's what it does. It's... It's, it's really simple. So I've got mine plugged into my stereo out there. You don't even need that. You can just plug in some bookshelf speakers, right? And that's why you right. have the four ports in the back for two pairs of speakers. Uh, right now, all it will do is play your Google Play Music. Right? Your Google Music. It will play YouTube videos and I just totally forgot the third one. Uh, TV. TV and movies. Yeah. And again, yeah, I watched the Transformers video on it when I set it up this afternoon. Right. So, and it does it really well, and it does it easily, right? Uh, you plug it in. It's, you know, you put the app on your phone. In fact, you can tap the queue with your phone, and it will say, oh, hey, you need the app. So I'll download it. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> so it has NFC. Um, 
So those are the things it does right now, but it does them really, really well. But it, it uh, there's also, I don't see any reason why Google can't say, oh, developers, uh, here's an SDK update. You can put streaming into your app and stream it exactly. out through the Nexus queue. Mm. Exactly. And, and that's what they need to do because that, that's really where the, where it comes at the. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I really think that's where it, com- where it comes into, where, where it's going to make itself like a very, a very interesting product is when you're get, you can pretty much take any content from any app that you have, stream it through uh, your phone over to it. And that's, it's, it's really powerful when you can do this. And, and um, I'm excited to see that because obviously there's a lot of people that have content and, and it's not even content that you're uh, that you have necessarily on your phone itself, but maybe it's on a network drive or it's on a cloud based drive somewhere and you can stream it from there over to it. And that's that's brilliant. I just love being able to do that. Now, uh, y- y- don't discount the fact that it's not streaming from your phone. That's a plus right. in my opinion. I've got the HTC Media Link HD here. I've been using it. I actually I enjoyed it a lot. I I've, I've talked about it ad nauseum, right? How you just take your phone, swipe three fingers up, it flies from your phone to the TV. That's the way that should work. But it was laggy. It's still laggy, right? It's, oh, it's, no good. It's, yeah, it it stutters really bad. The quality is so much better the way uh Google's doing it right now. And again, it's early. Um I I think I'm pretty safe in saying that I'm in the minority saying that it's totally worth $300 right now. If only for I'm the build right quality, with you. <laughs> the build quality and the design, I think, are just excellent and completely worth $300. This is something that's meant to sit out somewhere where people can see it. And in fact, Google said this in the keynotes. You know, you're supposed to show this off. It's not supposed to be like an Apple TV that hides in the back or an HTC Media Link, which actually has a little sticky clip so you can stick it on the back of a TV and put it out of the way. And more important, I think it's going to work on different devices. Right now, it's only on the Nexus 7 and, and the Galaxy Nexus. I, haven't I think it's because it's only on Jelly Bean, right? Right. Yeah. Well, but I don't know why it would only be on Jelly Bean. That doesn't, at least in my little brain, that doesn't make sense. And I haven't tried putting it on a different device yet. I need to. But, I mean, there's no reason why. I, I don't think there's any reason why it would only be on Jelly Bean. No, no. as long as the phone there's... supports Bluetooth, you can pair them and it should just work. Could it be because it's an extension of all this new Android Beam stuff that it needs a new version of that to be able to... Um, Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Maybe for the initial setup, you're right, it might. Could be. But, but we're, I, we're, I going, we're going to see this on more devices, I guarantee it. Yep. I, I know when when I set it up and I was sitting there playing with it and my wife was sitting beside me looking over my shoulder at my phone, and I said, just stop, give me your phone. And she handed me her phone and I reached over and tapped it and downloaded the app and hit the button and set it up. And I handed it to, to her and I said, here, now play all your Eric Clapton crappy music, Is anything you want. Just send it right to the TV. Her eyes got big as dinner plates and she shooed me out of the room. That's, you know, that's that's another thing that, that we can't discount is you can have 10 people sharing it all at once. Mm-hmm. And they show this at the keynote and it looks mm-hmm. pretty cool, but it's going to be a while before you get 10 people in the same room with Jelly Bean just normally right. Isn't it? Right. <laughs> outside of uh, the Android circles. Any reason they couldn't kind of backport it to ICS? Mm, again, is it to do with the new um, Android Beam APIs? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about it. I can't wait for more people to get it. I, I've been using it every day. I think it's really well done. Even though I, I didn't know what it was like, when I first saw it, I'm like, I totally want one of those. Yeah, it looks it's, awesome. It looks gorgeous. How much yeah. does it weigh? It's pretty heavy. Three pounds. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like two and a half, three pounds. It's got a 25-watt amp in it. Because again, you can just plug speakers into it and it'll work, and you know, stuff like that's not not like. It's made whatever. out of uh, what's, what's it made out of? It's uh, tungsten, something pretty solid, isn't it? Zinc, I think. <laughs> tungsten, yes. Yeah, so see, I thought it was titanium. I screwed up. It's tungsten. Yeah, it's, it's tungsten or zinc. I forget which. The bottom part. It's really nice. I wish I could see it right now. I can think about it out there in the living room, quietly glowing, I, like a I, beacon at night. I, I rooted mine, Phil. Did you? Yeah, I had to root the Nexus Q just because we could. I don't, I don't know that I can do anything with it. but And it was just as hackable as Google says, piece of cake. Oh, yeah. No, they've already got apps being run off it. So, it's it looks to be a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Heard. At the same time, it's not going to sell. <laughs> not at 300 bucks. No. no. I'm going to buy another. If it, if it had a piece of bitten fruit on the back it would sell for 300 bucks 
I don't know. I'm, I'm really think how many people think how many people you know have an Apple TV. It's uh, it's not that many. Yeah, but, but you know, it's that's made only in America. $100. It's made in so. America. It looks good. Don't the quality's high. Made in America stuff. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. all the components are from overseas, but they can yeah. they put it together here. You know, whatever. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited about it. It's it's. It works, and it works well, and it's going to do more. This is very early. I mean, let's not totally denounce the $300 part because nobody's actually touched it yet. It's pretty damn cool. It's going to do more. It will absolutely do more. Well, um, as long as it works as intended, then Samsung can build the $99 version next year. That's true, too. Mm. Let's see. Anything else from I.O. we need to talk about? Jelly Bean is awesome. I'm, I'm back on the Galaxy Nexus, by the way using Galaxy Nexus full-time. So I did mention, uh, a couple people in the chat room, I think, asked about it. So I took my SIM card out of my Galaxy S3 and popped it in the GeneX and was having issues. So at first it just mm. didn't recognize the data at all. And then it would recognize it for like half a day, and then it died again. Um, it, since then, it's been fine. It's been working great. I don't know what the deal is. In fact, I had emailed some contacts at, a, I had, uh, AT&T, and I'm like, what's going on? You know, I should be able to take my SIM card out, put it in another phone, and it works. That's how GSM works. Well, because you're coming from an LTE <laughs> plan and going back to an HSPA oh, device. God. Blah, no, blah, blah, blah. crap. That's crap. They did that with the iPhone, too, though. Right. Uh, so, regardless, it's working now. I don't know what to say. Did you, cha did you change anything with the APNs, by the way? No. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, the iPhone, I mean, that, that absolutely could be it. Thing, so. In fact, uh, you should be, if you haven't yet, we need, really need you to program um, your APN as, I'll, I'll find it here in just a minute. There's a special APN that'll get you actually faster speeds than oh, yeah. probably the one that you have. Oh. And then that'll get you, uh, that'll be, that'll get you good. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm very much happy being back on here, even. PTA. Uh, it's called PTA. It's the one that okay. you need. I will look that up. Um. You know, even the, the you know display on the One X is so much better, right? But yep. I'm loving having the soft buttons back down on the button, or back down at the bottom because my thumb can reach them better. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I love having the back button back on the left side. So for some reason, I hold my phones left-handed. I, I hold them in my left hand. I'm right-handed. I don't know why, but I always do. I think it comes down to uh, when I travel. I've got my laptop bag is across my chest on my left. I uh, have my rollerboard in my right hand, and then I have my—I've always had my phone in my left hand uh, pocket, so I hold it in my left hand. So now I can reach the back button again. That's kind of a big deal on an Android phone, right? Loving Jelly Bean. I'm perfectly oh fine with it. Yep. Amazing. Love Absolutely the amazing. I think the fact that we're all back on this thing is just a testament to how big a difference good software can make on a phone. Because yes. on paper, on the hardware, yeah. this thing is way behind the One X and the Galaxy S3. But once you take Jelly Bean into consideration, it brings it right up to par yeah. once again. Well, there's still the camera. Well, the camera still sucks. Nothing's going to yeah. change that. No. Of all the releases, I mean, Ice Cream Sandwich was great. Everything's been great. This is absolutely my favorite. I mean, it, it wasn't chock full of features, but the ones that they did put in there and their performance is just amazing. They've absolutely focused on the right things in this release. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, so somebody uh, just pinged me on Twitter saying, Nexus Q app runs on any Android phone or tablet running Android 2.3 or later. Ah. So there you go. Okay. I was right. Uh-oh. I was right. <laughs> I was right. Phil will have hundreds of phones hooked up to it now. <laughs> well, I mean, I tried earlier. Let me try again. But I couldn't get it to run on the uh, on the One X earlier. Can you get, get 2.3 phones with NFC? Is that even a thing? Uh, sure. Uh, the Galaxy S, S two. Hmm. Some of those aren't updated yet. Let's see. Nope. Still, and this could just be the market listing isn't showing up. So. But yeah, I mean, it should work on two dot three phones that have everything cool. else. So it says. It's totally worth yes. it. Yes, and Man it's not been Black released Man yet Man either. The, uh, mentions the keyboard. Down soft key button. Yes. Love oh, it. that is so Glad, great. Yeah. Glad yeah. it's there because nobody knew to hit back to get rid yeah. of it. And in fact, some of the third-party <laughs> keyboards had to put, you know, I think HTC did it too, had a button to hide the keyboard. Yes, it, it totally uh, makes sense. I can't believe that took so long. About damn time. <laughs> um, Jerry, I'm trying to think what else do we love about ICS. 
or I see a jelly bean. I mean, notice how um, uh, multitasking now. Yeah, we've all actually played with Google Now enough that yeah. we love it. Yeah, now is freaking awesome. It that. takes a while though to to for it to get used to everything though. You know, I mean, yes. right now yeah, I'm seeing still... weather and weather in my in my Minnesota Twins baseball scores. That's all I'm seeing. And it kind of sucks outside of the U.S. as well. There's not an awful lot of local data that you get. Yeah, but you guys get the cool uh, London background. Um, well, you do if you're in London. You just get the generic one if you're anywhere else. So was it obvious I... to you guys what it was when you first opened it? it took me a little like, like, what is this? No, it's um, really... It was because I sat through the keynote, but had I not, <laughs> yeah. I'd be confused. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once you I knew it, what and the, the, uh, the voice search on it is just amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah, especially yeah. offline. Offline voice, just so fast. Do you guys yeah. think it's scary? I was talking to my dad about it yesterday because he just got a Galaxy S3 and he's actually been reading about all this stuff. And he's like, it kind of scares the hell out of me. I said, See, well, it, it, it they seems... had all this data already. They're just doing something. With it. Yeah. It seemed Luckily creepy you when, when me, you I first hear it. about it in, in the presentation. Now, after using it, not so much. Yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah. That's the thing. Once you see it and it does it, you stop caring how creepy it is because it's cool. Yeah. And so, you know, we I, have to I remember keep... Google has this information anyway. This is just the first time they've ever thrown it in our face that they have it. So right. I, I keep hearing a lot of people saying that it's creepy. So give me a couple examples of what you're finding that's that's creepy because I'm not seeing it yet. Hang on, uh, Renee just asked if it uh, will ask if you would play game. Greetings. Shall we play a game? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's the War Games game that I've been playing. So, so yes, I can make it ask that. Um, all right, so what it does is it takes, it looks at your calendar, it can look at your um, location, so it knows where you are. You can set, and it took me a little while to figure that out. I needed help. You can set latitude where you live, where you work. Um, and so it... it says, hey, you're not at home right now, so I'm going to pop up on there. Here's how long it takes you to get at home. Yep. Or first thing in the morning, if it knows that you're suppo- probably supposed to be going to work, it will say, hey, here's the traffic on the way to work. Here's how long it's going to take you to get there, so you kind of know when to leave. Um, in my case, I fired it up the other day. <laughs> or I just opened it up to see what was there, and it was giving me directions to five guys. So mine knows I'm a fat ass who likes burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Did it really? It was also lunchtime, so that probably uh, had something to do with it. But yeah, <laughs> no, it, it totally put up five guys. <laughs> and cool. I, th- I think it was because it was lunchtime, and I've been there before, and it knows I'm a fat ass who likes burgers. <laughs> I was well, kind of mad at it. But that, is, that aside, <laughs> if you don't like it and you think it's creepy, you turn it off. Yeah, turn You're it right. off. You, you have enough. to opt in the first time you use it. It's not connected when you start your phone. How long before we start seeing advertising? Like, like So I saw five guys, right? How long before... Uh, say, you know, Wendy's is next door there. How long before Wendy's can pay Google money and then suddenly I'll see Wendy's instead of Five Guys? Uh, instead of, I'm decides, not sh- yeah. Go ahead, Alex. I, yeah, maybe not instead of, but maybe as well as down the bottom, the way maps, it's a separate ad as opposed to replacing stuff that you search for with, you know, preferred ads. I think that's that's the way to do it. That hopefully is the way they will do it. Uh, the the amount of user revolt will be huge. I think Google knows that. Whatever yeah, solution they come up with is going to have to be better than just a pink block full of ads beside the relevant text, like they do on search. I think getting getting people to widely accept this is going to be difficult enough without throwing ads that in there right mm-hmm. from the get go as well. Yeah. So I, I just I want to go back to something that I, I don't remember who just said it, but so you you have to enter in information about your like your home and your work, you're saying? You can do it. It does learn stuff by itself. So when we first switched this on, um, and I guess the first couple of days, it must have known where we were staying in San Francisco. And when we went down to Mountain View, it gave us directions and traffic information back to that hotel. So it'll learn stuff by itself, but you can input um, home information, work information if you want to manually. Yeah, I've been using it for a couple of days, and I, I have not seen that yet. So I'm not sure why exactly that is, but... I, Go to I've not a, seen any Google Maps on the like web, that. Mickey, and you can set your home and work yeah. address, mm-hmm. and it picks it up. On what? That, that's Google what Maps? I had to do. Okay, 
All right, I'll 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 have to play around a little bit more with it. I just it feels like it's, and I know they they you talk about it's going to learn stuff and and whatever, but the amount of manual stuff that that you it seems like you can manage through this, it doesn't feel creepy at that point because you're manually entering right. this information, yeah. and so then it's like, well, of course it's going to tell me how far it is away from my home <laughs> if if I've already entered where my home is. Now, if it figures out that I'm spending the hours of, you know, 10 p.m. till 10 a.m. at one place and you know vice versa at the other then that's a little weird but um at the same time it's also making an assumption that i'm glad that they can they allow you to change because certainly not everyone works a normal schedule too i like it it's cool so you get to it by swiping up from the uh, home button and you can do it from the lock screen as well how does it work i assume it doesn't work when you have a, a pin lock or whatever i don't have one of them. um well, I guess not, but you can still get to it at any point by swiping up um, from the home button. Yeah. So We'll find out here in just a second. You all keep talking and I'll tell and, you. And again, this is very, 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 very new. Yeah. It will get better. It will grow. Yeah. So, let's, How do you, you know, you're, you're seeing all these Siri comparisons and, and these grandiose, it sucks, it's great. Well, it's going to change. How do you guys reckon it's going to fit in with manufacturer skins? Because well, a lot see, of a lot of ICS phones out, don't right? have. I mean, I assume Samsung could opt to just kill this. Mm, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it does yeah. replace the standard Google Search app. So if you go to Google Search, this is still going to oh, yeah. come up. Whether the shortcut's still there, I guess, is a separate thing. I'll buy that. You you can't get to it from the lock screen if you've set a pin. No, and that makes sense. That's yeah. Not surprising. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Good. I mean, that's a good thing. I'm glad it can't, but somebody had to try. Right. Well. Um, anything else on Google now? I don't think so. Shall we talk patents? Oh, God. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I will try not to throw out the F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so, last Thursday, Friday, um, Judge Lucy Coe, federal judge, U.S. district judge, uh, granted an injunction against the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Dun, dun, dun! And basically hey, says, wait, hey, Phil, yes. tell everybody not to hate Judge Coe, that it's yes. not her fault. Well, <clears throat> right, so it's, it's easy to hate the judge, and I get that. And I'm glad Jerry said that, because I didn't want to be the one to say it. Um, the judge in this case takes a look at the patent that was granted and says, all right, yes, it looks like Samsung has infringed on this patent, and the patent is a search patent. It has to deal with the way uh, search results are parsed and, and, and not ranked. That's not the right word, but Ian, I forget the exact wording of the patent. I read a whole bunch. Of it's things. heuristics, isn't it, I think? It, yeah, it uses heuristics to figure out exactly what to present back to you, and it's all initiated from a single search basically so in apple's case it's siri uh, in google's case it's the search bar and uh the judge well, says all right i yes say 10 years ago in google's case it was google desktop the search bar in your taskbar but you know that doesn't matter no so the judge says all right the patent was granted to apple so let's see let's look at it and see if in fact it looks like samsung infringes the judge said yes and here's where it gets tricky so and, and I'll tell you another story about this in a second. But they have a hard time figuring out. I mean, it would make sense that any rational person would say, all right, Samsung's infringing. How many phones were sold? They owe Apple X amount of dollars, right? That would make sense. But the problem is they can't figure that out. They don't know. And it, the judge admits this in her ruling. Um, and, and I'm trying to remember what's what because the latest one I read was the uh, – the order denying the stay. So Samsung said, hey, we want you to stay this injunction while we appeal. And the judge said no. So that's what came out uh, Tuesday, Tuesday evening. And that's the most recent one. And it gets a little unclear and, and pretty muddy. Like, well, why do you have to outright ban it? Why can't Samsung just fork over money? You slap them on the wrist and everybody goes well, about their business. It, it doesn't it, quite work that way. Apple it, doesn't it, want their money. Well, and that's it, the other thing. They don't thing. want to license uh, it out. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So Apple... You know, You'll also hear a lot about compulsory licensing and why can't Apple be forced to license this technology so that things don't have to be banned. Well, 
again, the next question is, do you want to live in a world where, you know, you can be forced to license something that's not, and, and I'm not an expert on all this stuff, but we're all learning a good little bit. And then you get into Fran patents, so fair and reasonable, and uh, what's the other, uh, 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 you know, what's the term, I'm, the, the Jerry, the essential patents. Yes. Standard, standards essential patents. So things like GSM or radios, right? You know, and, and things that, that everybody has to be able to use in order for any of this to work. So some things can be licensed. You can, you know, force them to be licensed, but for the most part, not. Not if they're not essential. And this is not an essential one, and I get that. So, yeah, it's not about money. Samsung has a buttload of money. I think uh, tonight they're predicting something like $5.2 billion uh, for the quarter, I think. Maybe for the, I forget which. Uh, I need to go look at it. But, yeah, I mean, Samsung's not hurting for money. Apple certainly is not hurting for money. This isn't about money. It's part of the money. But it, it's about, it, what I think it's about, it's about slowing Android, yep. punishing Android, punishing the manufacturers who use Android, punishing their families, going to their houses, taking all the stuff out of their houses, dragging it out into the street, setting it on fire, and then pissing on it. <laughs> which, is, which is ultimately about money. <laughs> which is ultimately about money. It's in Blackman X says it in the chat room and he's right. And it's also about protecting your IP. And I get that too. From a business standpoint, this makes sense. Apple says, Hey, we've got this. We got it patented. <laughs> we got it patented. Oh. Hey, and hey, we're I gonna mean, protect it to the best of our ability. And I get that. And you know what they should. I mean Apple's they're beholden the to their to their shareholders. They have to pursue this. Yes. I don't it's like against it. the law if they don't. But I don't like it. I disagree with it. But I get that they're doing what they should do and what they have to do. I wish there were a better way. There needs to be a better way. Um, injunctive relief is not necessarily the, the best way, in my opinion, to go about this. In fact, I was hanging out with my family yesterday. My dad's a judge. Um, so, you know, he's been through law school once or twice <laughs> and understands his way of thinking as well. And so I'm explaining all this to him, and he says, wait a minute. This is this was a preliminary injunction. I said, "Yeah, he's like, that's not supposed to be the way it works." So I mean, even and, and he's not a you know a patent judge. You know, he he doesn't sit on this stuff. So that's why this actually goes back to what Jerry says: don't hate the judge. Um, you know, you need judges who understand this stuff. You need judges who are specialized in this stuff. So you have Judge Co. Uh, in, in California, I think uh, you have Judge Posner in Chicago, who they understand this stuff. They are experts in this stuff. So. I, I cringe a little bit when people immediately say the judge is rigged or whatever, and I don't think that's the case. Now, I, I'm all for disagreeing with people's opinions on things. That's fine, but I think we need to be a little smarter about the way we go about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the judge has a responsibility to enforce the law as written, right. and right now the law says that that's Apple's and Samsung's not allowed to use it. Yeah. Uh, I hate that shit. That's That just burns me up. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I think we everybody with an Android phone should go march on the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. Let's let's make them change it. You know, uh, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. If I go on, the f bomb is gonna come. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's 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 real tough. Um, so it was it yesterday morning? I guess I got up early and, and I wrote. I kind of seemed like a love letter, but this too will pass. We'll get past this, right? Google is so they had to pull the Galaxy Nexus. It's not pulled from the market; it's still there. It just says coming soon now, so they're not shipping any right now. Um, they're going to start shipping them next week. They told uh, Joanna Stern at ABC News got a quote at them today, so they're going to start shipping again next week, which also means we should have an OTA soon, I guess, for existing ones. Uh, Don't Jared, take it. Don't take it. <laughs> Don't take well, it. Here's, here's the thing. Right this, local search. Don't take yeah. it. The, this um, particular the, thing may go away, the, but they've been doing. Did, they sued HTC as well, right? Like a year ago. Well, year ago? all sorts of different lawsuits. They sued for all everybody. Sorts of different reasons yeah. In all sorts of different jurisdictions, and that's where it gets really confusing. So you'll have you know these federal things, which is you know the patents a federal thing. So I get that. Then you have the ITC, you know the International Trade Commission which is uh, the latest HTC, or one of the latest HTC ones, right? So when the, uh, when the 1X and the uh, Evo got delayed, that was the ITC. You had another one in, uh, was it the UK this week? Over slide down um, the Yes, which, yeah, which HTC actually won. HTC the won thing I was going to mention about the, um, the Genex, though, is, is kind of on the similar lines, that it, 
only applies to the US. And there's a separate bunch of Galaxy Nexuses out there with the uh, the Actu software on it. So those those phones will be getting a separate OTA. And those phones won't need to have all this stuff stripped out. And presumably, there'll be a separate system image put up on developers.google.com that you can then download uh, and just flash that instead. So there are going to be ways around this, if you know what you're doing. I just, I want to know are, why the hell some idiot in a patent office gave Apple this patent. I, I, I was I was mad enough over this this embedded link based on data type because the Lynx browser's done that for 25 freaking years. This one, Google has prior art for this. If, if you bought a, a Toshiba computer five years ago, Google Desktop was built in. You started the computer, and your taskbar was a little search box. Searched your device and the web, and it was touchscreen enabled if your computer had a touchscreen. So that's complete bullshit that this, that this patent was granted. Mickey, has this, I mean, you obviously just bought another Nexus. I mean, did, did this sway your, uh, sway your uh, decision to buy another one, let alone root it? Well, that is a very interesting transition from what we're talking about. But anyway, I uh, <laughs> no, there there was really no no influence in that other than I I was really all it was was just I wanted to check out Jelly Bean because mm-hmm. well, it was Jelly Bean and you know it's looked to be really nice and honestly it's amazing it, it's just absolutely amazing. I it was the you know the, the the best way that I can describe it is ice cream sandwich is like Windows Vista as Jelly Bean is Windows Seven. I mean it is. Like you go, wow, Windows Vista, that seemed good until you saw Windows 7, and then you're like, oh, man, like what we were missing out on. Well, and, the reason uh, I asked that is because is I'm trying to figure from a consumer standpoint, like when somebody sees headlines about this, what the hell do they think? I mean, I'm sure they don't understand it. We barely understand it. It's It's got to be confusing and, and scary, and it's not like the Nexus. It's a huge consumer device, but it sounds bad for Android, I suppose. And again, that's I think that's what Apple wants. Yeah. And that's of, why that's why they put out that like, their line has always been that this isn't just a pattern issue. This is this is Samsung copying their OS and copying their ideas and their their inventions. Um, where that that really is just so far from logic and common sense that that's not even funny. I don't well, want any one, of their stuff. <laughs> I want to go into the uh, really scary thing. So I retweeted and, and shared on Google Plus something Renee wrote yesterday, and it at least got me thinking. And at the time, I wasn't even sure that I agreed with Renee. I just wanted to get it out there, and people got all pissed off. Oh, my God, (laughs) how did you put this out? Well, whatever. So uh, Jerry and I were together, and Renee's listening right now. He's producing this podcast. So Renee, jump in here if you want. So uh, Jerry and I talked to Renee this morning because I wanted to to talk a little more about just his his, uh, kind of rationale on this. So Renee wrote something that basically asked, shouldn't we be mad at Google? Here, Google keeps writing this OS with all these things that keep getting it sued. You know, you had the whole Oracle thing. You've got all the Apple stuff. And Jerry kind of smacked us all down here in one fell stroke, and I'm glad you did. So, Jerry, what was your response to that this morning? Because it was really good. Well, as far as Android goes, when has Google ever lost a case and proven that they've infringed? infringed? Google never has. Oh. He's right. And Google has never sued anybody over IP related to the mobile space. This is one-sided as hell. Renee, you're out there. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I agree with Jerry in principle, but it, it, just because I don't press charges if someone steals my bread doesn't mean I can steal bread. I mean, that's that's the most extreme, ludicrous version of the argument. But I think it shows that that's you know that's a contentious argument. And the other thing is, uh, like my principle was, for example, you had Eric Schmidt the guy who ran Java for Sun, go to work at Google, and Google didn't have the foresight to clean room him or do anything they could to just make sure that this wouldn't become an issue later. And over and over again, they're a bunch of young, brash guys, and they push technology so fast, I don't think they took the time to make sure it was as legally and ethically covered as possible so that Android manufacturers, retailers, and users could have as relaxed and enjoyable experience as possible. Hmm. And see, I'm glad that you took a minute to tell people that, Renee, because you know what? I respect that opinion. Absolutely. I, I can't say that I agree with you, but I can't say that I think you're wrong. 
that's you know we have different thoughts on it but uh and i you know i'm i'm glad some of the people hopefully that we're all on the hate train maybe they'll listen to this and and get a little bit more insight because uh i respect your views on open source quite a bit and i respect well, and, that's and the thing touche is- on the original release of the iphone too i mean it it was half baked too i mean and people liked it but it would it's come a long way since it was first released for the record, after we all talked this morning, Jerry and Renee made out for a good two, three minutes. <laughs> well, but Phil, I mean, we, you, you got in you got in trouble for retweeting me, and I retweeted your article at the same time, and I pointed I out that that's what adults <laughs> do. We discuss these things. I, I'm very much in that West Wing philosophy that I moan that we can't have awesome arguments about important issues like this. Mm-hmm. And we should, because otherwise you get Damn things right like patents. You, you, otherwise, you get things that are done like you know ham sandwiches getting patents. And that's not good for anybody. <laughs> this too shall pass. I that's a rim Google, patent, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wish Google didn't have to change the software. I wish we didn't have to see devices banned because I, there needs to be, you know, I'm mixing judicial metaphors here, but least restrict, you know, least, uh, least restrictive means, right? There needs to be an easier way to do it and a better way to do it and a better way to solve these things. And right now there's not. So... Galaxy Nexus will be back for sale next week, and I'm sure Apple will. Look, you're going to see headlines next week that that says, you know, Apple again, you know, files another countersuit or whatever, or appeals whatever, yep. or they tried it with HTC again after the uh, the One X and the Evo thing, and the ITC said, nope, they fixed it, they're good, we're good to go. And and so. always remember, kids, we can get mad at Apple because it sure seems like they're enjoying this. But it is Apple's responsibility to pursue this. Right. Mm-hmm. And why wouldn't they have a second second shot at it? Why not try and inconvenience a competitor more? Right. I see desperation. They can't stop the Android train. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're making plenty of money on that stuff. Yeah, it, I don't think I mean, Apple's hurting when it comes to uh, the bank account. Yeah. No, they're not, but I mean, why would they bother? It's because they Android sales. They've been saying that, right? And they because they can, and because they have they have but money to, to spend on on stuff to do this to to slow it down. We're putting a dent in their business, and they want to make up for that. They want to stop it. Otherwise, That's they wouldn't right. be messing and, around and with this. They have better things to do. And and their legal team's responsibility is to do everything they can within the law to maximize profits at Apple. Mm. And and that's what they're doing. I mean, if I was an Apple shareholder, I would want them to do it, even if I don't approve of it. All I know is I'm never buying one of their products again. I'm really mad about this. Mm. But, you know, I'm an Android fanboy, so I'm not typical. That's just it. I mean... We all, and, and I'll joke right along with everybody, boycott Apple. Uh, I really hadn't planned on buying any Apple products to begin with. <laughs> so I was going to buy their new uh, iMac, I thought. It was, or their new, uh, what do you call that thing? What is it? The, uh, the Retina MacBook? MacBook the MacBook with the Retina? Yeah. I literally had the thing in my shopping cart. And then I was like, you know what? Screw this. I can't believe they're doing this. So Why? You, you'd, I, you'd love the damn thing. Buy it and I'll help you put a bone <laughs> to on it. <laughs> well, but you know what? That's better than having one and then apologizing for using it, like I saw some people doing. Don't apologize for using it. Either use it or don't. If you're not going to use it on principle, then fine. Don't use it on principle. Don't apologize to me for doing it. That's just lame. I think. Should we stop talking about this now? Yeah, Please. I think we should. I'm, I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a um, couple extra things to talk about. So the Droid Incredible 4G LTE is now available. I have one here. Yay. It's almost done. I um, loved your yeah. Google Plus, uh, the, your first impression <laughs> about that. Why? <laughs> Just get it right oh, head. why? Here's, here's the review in a nutshell, right? It's a good phone. Like The camera's not as good as the HTC One phones, of course. It's a good phone, but why would you get this for, for $50 more? You get a Galaxy S3. Or you can get a Galaxy and, Nexus. And why yep. did Verizon, in their infinite wisdom, not get an HTC One device instead? Well, that's that's the question. Of the mm, year. That's the other thing. Yeah. And it's, Maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, you have some people with old Incredibles and their contract's up. They love it. 
Might as well get oh, I'm, you know what? I'm sure it's a good phone. I, I'm sure people are going to love it, but it could have been a one one X. Yeah, definitely. Should have been, but it's not. It's not going to be. So, I mean. No. Nope. <laughs> well, and it's smaller too, right? How big is it? Mm-hmm. No, it, it's a good size. It's four inches, and it feels. Uh, that's one of the things I write about. I mean, it, it feels nice. It's, it's nice to use a yeah. small device again. Um, that said, I'm used to the larger screen, but device size itself, it feels good. I, <laughs> I, my friend, you know, especially my iPhone friends, they pick up my phone. They're like, "Jesus, this thing is enormous!" Like they don't, <laughs> they're not used to it. They don't like it. So I, you know, I, I think you, four inches is still a good size. Now that I've got the soft buttons back where they should be, uh, on the Galaxy Nexus, I mean, it, it's, I'm much better with that screen size. Uh, the uh, Motorola Atrix HD got outed today, even though nobody's actually announced it, really. Ice mm-hmm. cream sandwich, four and a half inches, 1280 by 720, Corella glass. Meh. I mean, there's going to have to be something there. Maybe but. meh. Meh. This is the first phone that, you know, was still in pre-production when Google got into the picture. Right. Maybe uh, Mm. some of our little niggles with blur and and the way the hardware is will have been addressed. Maybe not. We'll have to see. It it looks pretty close to stock, and I I think it's it's good to see Motorola moving in kind of a different direction with their industrial design. If you look at some of the... Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more organic and not so sort of industrial. Yeah. Um, You know, the the Photon Q has gone through the FCC. That's the one that should... uh, have the keyboard that got added in our forums uh, last week, the week before. So uh, we talked about the Nexus Q earlier. Um, you want to do some emails and voicemails? Start with emails so we can uh, get the voicemails ready. Yep. 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 All right. You guys, I've got to go clear my head again. I'm sorry. I'm just sick as anything. But you guys uh, start reading. All right. I'll take the first one here. Uh, Dominic writes, will Samsung update their Galaxy S3 to Jelly Bean? knowing that the new Google search in Google Now kills S-Voice. Oh, well, of course, yeah, they're going to update to Jelly Bean, and they're probably going to incorporate S-Voice into Jelly Bean and hopefully improve it and make it as good as Google Search and Google Now. It's th- They're they're not going to let that hold it back because their first release of their, their software isn't as good as Google's subsequent release, I think. Yeah, uh, they'll, they'll release it and all, all the Jelly Bean stuff will be in there. The question for me, I think, is how... Um, so we've, we've got Android Beam, we've got S Beam, um, both pretty similar, both use different methods to send files to yep. uh, between devices. Um, one uses Bluetooth, one uses either. Wi-Fi Direct. Uh, um, yeah, Wi-Fi Direct. So um, I think getting those two to play nicely alongside each other is going to be a real headache for Samsung when they're doing Jelly Bean on the S3. I'm not sure what they're going to do to you know, make it identify which one they're going to use. And, and they can't they can't just kill their own because no because the compatibility with stuff that's still right. on ICS right. yeah so I'm really interested to see what they're going to do there yeah I'm more interested in what's going to happen when I swipe down my notification panel I'm going to see cards and all that kind of stuff uh, so hopefully there um, uh, there's going to be all that crap that's left over from gingerbread I'm sure but maybe you'll get <laughs> you'll get the bigger uh, <laughs> notifications and stuff in there too. Mm. So, well, I'll take this next one here because, well, I just happen to be mentioned in it. Chuck writes a number of months back, I believe this was around Mickey's second or third Galaxy Nexus. One of the daily deal sites had the Galaxy Nexus for sale, and I was able to acquire it. The one thing I've noticed though is that there doesn't seem to be any ability to do an over the air upgrade to the device. It's now July, and I have not even seen a push for Android 4.0.4, I'm still stuck on 4.0.2. I've been doing some reading, and apparently the GSM Galaxy Nexus devices have different variants, some like mine called the Yakju variant, which were upgraded by Samsung and not Google. So my question is, will Samsung ever push an upgrade to this Yakju variant? So far, signs don't seem favorable. How easy is it to, to flash one of the other variants? Well, uh, Chuck, that's a good question, actually, and Uh, One which I can answer because I did it, and I will tell you it's actually very easy. Uh, Really quite as easy as just actually just Googling how to update the Galaxy Nexus 2. And and Jerry, you're going to have to answer this for me. What is the one that is updated by Google called? It's called uh, the TAKJU. T-A-K-J-U. T-A-K-J-U. And, well, YAKJU is updated, like playing YAKJU without any letters after it is updated by Google as well. 
because yeah. that's the that's the European one. Okay. Yeah, so actually, with with XW or um, other stuff after it, that's uh, Samsung. Sorry. But my, yeah, my my original Galaxy Nexus was a Yakju XW, and like Mickey, I just I flashed it to the Takju mm -hmm. version. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I was able to do it, which means it's got to be pretty easy because it, it. I mean, I wouldn't have done it if it wouldn't have been, and and so, um, and certainly it's not something that. Uh, is especially with the nexus is very hard to do but yeah absolutely get it so that you can get your 404 and then of course eventually get the the 41 uh which i guess hopefully will be pushed out here within the next week or two and uh to get started uh hit the android central nexus forums uh we don't get as much gsm traffic as we do for the verizon version but uh there's plenty of people in there that will get you unlocked and Get you on the Takju path, so you'll get Jelly Bean the day Google releases it. And again, flashing this is one of those things that's going to wipe your device, so just be aware of that. Jerry, do you have oh, to yeah. worry about the Google Wallet stuff if you do this? I think yes. Uh, if he has a Yakju XW, yeah, that and he doesn't have it active, anyway. He probably doesn't yeah. have Google Wallet. All right, fair enough. So before we move on, I got to just say something here because in, in, I had mentioned it, and, and Phil had mentioned it too. So I, I rooted the Nexus and, and installed Jelly Bean on it, which honestly it was funny because I, I was going back and forth with Jerry about this on how to do it because I was it, it seemed a little daunting, and I'm not sure why, because you, you, you do a search for this and it really isn't that big of a deal. And Jerry said, well, just go get one of the automated uh, routers and, and it'll mm -hmm. take care of it for you. But that required finding a Windows computer, and finding a Windows computer that I could do this on was actually harder than entering terminal commands <laughs> right. on a Mac to be able to do it. So I ended, I ended up doing it on a Mac, and it was incredibly easy. It was unbelievable how easy it was. So I got it installed, well, and go ahead. Yeah, you, let me back you up, because remember, we're talking two different things here. Now, you probably did root your phone, but if all yes. you want to do is get Jelly Bean on it, it just has to be unlocked. Yeah, that's what right. Yeah. Okay, well, I just rooted it just for fun. I don't know what I did yes. for. <laughs> well, good. I'm, I'm glad you did. You should you should have to do that more often. <laughs> you can now so open can... a folder that you couldn't before. That's right. That's right. But but it's it, you know it's it's amazing just how easy that is to do. And you know when you're talking about you know putting in uh, a different variant on the Nexus, especially it is it, it's it seems daunting and it shouldn't be. Um, you know, and, and some of the, the tutorials that are out there are make it so simple to do. Um, and there's a ton of support for them. And it's just it's just absolutely a, a beautiful testament to just how much support there is around doing this and just how great the Android communities are. Because, you know, I, I didn't even really think about it. And, and all of a sudden it was done uh, less than 30 minutes. I mean, it's I, you know, Phil, you've talked about this, but I go back to like the flashing different roms on the windows mobile days and oh my gosh i mean you'd sit there yeah. for hours and hours trying to do this and it was just so it was ridiculous it? It, and it's so easy now and once you learn some of the the terminal commands and what they do and, and why they do what they do it makes sense and it's funny because i'll go you know a month or two without doing anything and i get a little rusty at it and i go crying to jerry and then all jerry says is did you put it in usb debugging mode jerky <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, damn it, I forgot again. <laughs> but the little things like, you know, remembering how to get to a bootloader and then remembering how to flash recovery or a radio or, or system or to, or how to wipe system and, and cache data and all that from a command line. I tell you, it's actually faster than rebooting into recovery and doing it. So once you learn to do it, it yep. really does make a big difference. In fact, I get to the point where, I won't even reboot my phone. Like I won't pull a battery and then do the little key combination. I will plug it in and type in the terminal command because it's easier on my brain that way, which doesn't make any sense. But that's how I do it now, even on a Mac. And and, and in fact, Jerry was giving me crap uh, when I first got this Mac. But damned if I didn't get the uh, SDK installed by myself. Damned if I didn't uh, figure out the terminal. Well, you know, a little bit of searching. But I'm perfectly fine on it now, just to, as I was in Windows now. He's bugging me to get back on Linux and relearn that, <laughs> and rightfully and, so. <laughs> and and I just I just want to throw something else out there is that for because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening to the show that that love Android and love what you can do with it and have never tried to do this and and honestly, prior to July 3rd, I had never rooted a device before. And mm -hmm. what Phil just went through uh, in the in the steps that he went through in about 20 seconds is literally what you do. That's it. I mean, it's. It, it is so it is so easy. I mean, it's 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 not something that should be intimidating. And I I think we kind of overlook that sometimes just because there's 
we assume that a lot of the people that are, that are doing this are the ones that are listening. But if you're not, if you're not comfortable with it, absolutely hit up the forums and, and start doing some searching for it. And you're going to find it is really not as difficult as it, as it seems. And it's almost impossible to, to brick one of these devices beyond repair. And I think that's what's, what's so important is you shouldn't be intimidated by it. You just you do it, you play with it, you, you find something that works for you. Uh, and just and start doing some searching and research, and you're going to find that uh, it's it's just great. And um, yeah, this latest Nexus for me, this is a Verizon model. Uh, I, I threw on Jelly Bean on it, and I entered in, of course, my my credentials when I loaded it up. And um, I did this when I wasn't at home. And by the time I got home, I walked in the door, and I realized that I was on Wi-Fi. I'm like, how am I on Wi-Fi? And of course, Ooh. it had loaded up all of my Wi-Fi settings for my house from yep. who knows when I had saved you know the backup of this to you know, whatever, it just kind of like pushed through. And and that's just, I don't know, to me, that, that just tickled me. I was like, this is amazing that it and was the able other, to The other you know? reason that it's important to know all this stuff is especially if you're using a Nexus, because we have the factory images, you can flash them back and it takes 10 minutes to do. Yeah. You need to know the steps to be able to do that. And that's important. Yeah, it and things are a little bit more risky if you've got um, a device that's locked bootloader and you need to actually use exploits to get it unlocked. Oh, right. sure. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm to the point now where I'm never going to recommend that somebody unlocks and roots their Samsung, HTC, Motorola, LG, whatever phone anymore. I mean, it's if if that's well, how you, you want to roll. Well, but using HTC, you, but you're you're damn right. That's how I'm going to roll. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but using HTC, HTC is still doing it the right way, right? They're giving you the sure, option. sure, yes, mm, but it's kind of. But this goes back to I'm gonna why say that I, I, I ask people, well, why are you rooting your phone? What do you want to do with it that you can't already do? And if you, ha if you have a good reason, then by all means do it. But if, all you, if you're rooting it because everybody says you need to root it, I want you to think about it. That, that, it should that just, puts a, it should a just come rooted forward. in the first place. No. Now, I'll yes. just, just, it's so It's so easy to do. It's like locking a door with a piece of tape. I mean, you might as well just root it, put a code in, put a code in the settings that you have to pipe in if you really want to do it. That's true. And, you know, just make it. They should have something like the HTC bootloader tool that just gives you super user admin. Yeah. And I can cool see why HTC icon, right? and all those other guys would do it, but Galaxy Nexus, or the Nexus? Yeah. Kenny writes, I was wondering if Google Glasses will give any indication to other people that you're recording video. I wonder because I could see potential legal ramifications from people wearing these. I, God, absolutely. I hope not. I, you hope not? <laughs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> kidding, Bill. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's a dirty old man. No, I'm willing to bet there will be something. I mean, yeah, look, it, you're not going to see these in production until like 2014. If, if ever. But, you know, we, remember what you're seeing now with Project Class these are not production devices. It was funny. Um, so it, at IO, you go register to try to get, I forget the name of the developer project you're doing with this. And uh, so I go to register for it because, like, what the hell? You know, it'd be cool to have these. We should get them. Uh, Explorer Edition, that's right. And uh, so I go to register, and, and you're typing in your information on a computer, and it asks you a question like, how are you going to use these? Are you going to use them for medical, business, or scientific purposes? I'm like, uh, No. <laughs> it comes back to thank you very much. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> These have not been licensed for personal. Use. Damn it! Why didn't you hang on? Give me a second. Back, back, back. And it's like oh, oh, back. no. That's that's a good thing, Phil. Let, let's it, get it in the right people's hands first. I know, but then I see websites like getting three and four and five of them and making a big. I I can't wait to see the development they do on these. Well, if if all these other websites jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff, Phil? As long as I source it properly, yes. <laughs> yes, I am not eligible. I have many things, but eligible is not one of them. All right, who wants the next one? Chris writes, I use both the Google Play Store and the Amazon App Store for apps. I mainly use the Amazon Store uh, for free and discounted apps, and mainly sit with Google Play for the rest of my purchases. Uh, my problem is that the Amazon Store sees my apps, uh, sees apps that were downloaded via Google Play and wants to update them. Uh, this is now becoming quite a pain in the ass as it wants to update everything it sees. I guess that's what it means. Um, how do I turn off? Uh, how do I turn that off other than disabling Amazon's App Store notifications? Um, if I do that, will I, how how will I know uh, when to update stuff that was purchased via Amazon? Old school. Yeah. <laughs> 
if we ever figure this out, we have an answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we've been getting this one for months and months and months. If I, I have read it later, or well, it's called Pocket now from both stores. Right. And I can never remember which one I have installed. And if I have Amazon's installed, Google Play tells me to update. If I have Google Play's installed, Amazon tells me to update. <laughs> and I'm constantly updating an app that doesn't need updated because I'm old and feeble-minded. So that's something somebody needs to fix. That's why I quit using Amazon. I just I don't have the headspace for that sort of thing right now. I need my apps to update where they're supposed to update from, and that's it. Sorry, Amazon. I just know the minute I stop looking at the Amazon app, one of those exclusives is going to come out again. Sure. And I'm going to have to dig it out and install it, so I just leave it on there. You'll steal it. What? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to keep my app for nice and tidy, so I uninstall anything I'm not using, and then just install when I do need it again. Jerry the pirate. Mm, that's me. <laughs> so yeah, no real answer for that. Sorry. Jordan writes, looking at the Nexus Q for what it does for the price. Can you honestly suggest that someone buys it? I understand it's made in America, but. Can that justify the price tag? Considering other options like a review, Apple TV, or even a PS3 or Xbox 360, is this thing worth our time and money? I say yes, but if you're really just unsure, then hold off. It's 300 bucks. I get that. Right, right. Um, hey. you know, for me, I said something interesting on Google+. Plus. I said, it does everything I used to use Google TV for. And nobody picked up on that. Oh, dude, everything Totally. I, Everything I used to use Google TV for, or or everything, you know, that's to say I did a whole bunch of stuff on Google TV that had nothing to do with TV at all. Yep. You know, I watched <laughs> YouTube. I listened to music. I uh, could never really run apps all that well. Uh, but, you know, now you can watch movies and, and, and do things more properly. I need to test it out a little bit more and uh, really look at the quality because I've been doing uh, Netflix through the Xbox, and that works great. So I, I just need to check this a little bit more. But for what I use it for, it works great. Three hundred bucks. You can put it on your money. coffee table. Yeah, I mean, you can leave it out for people to see. Um, I I like it. I think it's worth three hundred dollars. I'm also prone to impulse purchasing. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, Especially uh, if it's my, Android related. My office slash bedroom right now. <laughs> you, you, if my wife were here, she would hit me with something. Uh, but. I think it looks great. I think it's worth it just for the design and the build quality alone. So if if you appreciate the finer things in life, yes. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. I do, actually. The next is Q. The next Those is who appreciate Q. the finer things in life. I wish you wouldn't have brought that up because I was going to say no, but now I'm like, hmm. You're totally going to buy one. Who are you kidding? <laughs> totally yeah. going to buy one, yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. Who wants it? Nathan writes... I'm a Verizon Unlimited Data user that does not want to give it unlimited data. I was hoping Google I.O. would bring us LTE Nexus phone use. Can we expect to see LTE phones sold on the Play Store? No. Uh, thinking, I would say I would, okay. see, I would say probably eventually. Not yet. Not while LTE is uh, not while the only LTE Nexus is the Verizon. I mean, Jerry, I know your, I know your answer to this, right? LTE is a closed standard. Right. You can't just, it's you horrible. Can't just put it, it out there. But at some point, I mean, it's what's next, right? And I mean, it, AOSP it, can't just languish forever on HSPA+. Plus. So, and I mean, it's, something's going to have to happen, right? Eventually, Europe's going to be blanketed in LTE in like 10 more years. Or and it's not so close that you can't buy an LTE phone in Australia or in Europe and run it on an ALTE carrier. In fact, you can do it probably easier than you can here in the States. Yeah. So eventually, it's going to happen. Um, it's just a, ca- a question of whether it's this November or next November. But... You're never going to see an unlocked LTE phone that just works. I know, but we're going to. So have you're going to have right? phones on the Google Play Store that are carrier branded. No. Um, well, you can buy you can buy LTE phones in um, Asia that aren't locked to any particular network, even on the LTE but, side. But do they work on more than one network? Uh, I think so, because it's all just frequency based, isn't it? You can buy um, an eighteen hundred megahertz one um, X from or one XL from Australia and use it quite happily in Germany. I still don't see it happening. It's, yeah, it's something, the, the, something's going to have to happen. 
it's going to be kind of it's going to be tough because unless I mean we're talking about the only LTE nexus right now is going to be the Verizon model, right? And what's the, what's the benefit of selling it through the Google Play Store for them? So I I, uh, I don't know. I I think I think at some point you're I think you're right. November or next November, maybe. But we're we're waiting for chipsets to to catch up because we need to have these chips that can handle the different. Not only the bands, but also these these different almost sub bands, right? That that we have that are out there now that are um, that are causing so much of an issue with this very uh, new technology. And, and so once LTE can can finally find itself in where you can buy it and you can use it on the 700 bands, both being used by AT and T and Verizon here in the states, but then ultimately what's being used internationally, maybe maybe then we're going to find ourselves there. But it's it's not as compatible and as universal as what you're going to find on HSPA. And, and, and so it's just going to be a little while, I think, is, is probably the best answer for that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I All don't right, know. Go voicemails and we'll get out of here. Yay? Yes? Sure. John you're Paul? the boss. John Paul? Um, this is John Paul. calling for the Android Central Podcast. I might have a quick question about the multitasking button on ICS. I assume it'll be the same as Jelly Bean. Um, I just upgraded from my Evo 3D to a GMAX, and so I'm just really getting into using ICS on a daily basis. And I thought the multitasking button brought up all apps that were still running or in memory. But I can tell when I go to select an app from the multitasking menu, sometimes it, it has to reopen. So it seems more like a recently used app list. Is that true? And if I flick an app away from that menu, am I closing it or just removing it from the list? Anyway, I appreciate the um, answer. Um, love you guys' work. Love the site. All right. Thanks. Bye. Uh, as I understand it, the list is a list of recent stuff, not necessarily, not necessarily stuff that's in memory. But if you swipe something away, it does close it. Pretty sure it was Andy Rubin or someone that answered that question when ICS first came around. Okay, it, it doesn't. I mean, it may, it may supposed to. I mean, it, but it doesn't. Uh, and see, this, it, the Linux kernel manages your memory. There's no user interface for that. Uh, all it is is a recent apps list, and when you swipe it away, it takes it out of the app list. Now, it's very possible that it's supposed to close it, and it closes it eventually, but it doesn't do it right away, and you can watch the log cats and see that. So, you know, it's... A lot of people say that's not true multitasking. I mean, and, you know, I can't disagree with that, but I'll rely on the, the kernel and its 12 billion transistors before I'll rely on my old brain. Oh, come on, Jerry. I like your brain. Well, I like my brain, too, but I can't keep track of everything. I can't remember the app I was using. Hell, I can't remember what I was doing five minutes ago. Who am I kidding? But, uh, you know, I... I, I the kernel is more than capable of doing it. I want the kernel to just keep doing it. Fair enough. Um, who's next? How about Paul? Hey, this is Paul outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I have a question for Android Central. I'm looking at my sons have uh, Virgin Mobile accounts, and of course the selection isn't that great. So I'm looking and wondering. What phones, if any, can be bought off Sprint unlocked, you know, off contract and moved over to Virgin Mobile? Or is it, does it require uh, some sort of ROM hacking? Thank you very much. That's a good question. Can you do it? Not legally. Not, yeah, not legally. Yeah. It's, it's not hard to do, and it shouldn't be illegal. But uh, it is. It, yeah. Virgin Mobile's going to tell you, uh, no, I'm sorry, if you try to do it without trickery. Uh, sorry. That's a Good bummer. Business. I mean, but yeah. now you can do it. You can go to Cricket. Those those Cricket techs, bless their soul, you walk in there with any damn phone, and they're more than happy to disappear in the back and <laughs> fiddle with a little bit of numbers and bring it back to you with a big grin, and here's your new phone number. But uh, Virgin Mobile just doesn't do that. Uh, yeah. Sorry. All right, finally we have Fernando. Hey, this message is for the Android Central Podcast. My name is Michael. Um, I'm Hello. on the forums as RF Mike. 
Uh, I'm calling from the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. I uh, love the podcast. Phil and Jerry, hope you guys are having a great time out there. Google I.O. This is for episode 101, if you guys have one. Um, word on the net is that HTC will be will not be outdone by Samsung, and they are releasing a phone that recently just had a screenshot leaked uh, of a phone that's going to be like the One X, but it is a quad-core uh, S4 chip setting, and they're calling it the One X XL. Will Verizon be getting this phone uh, since they passed up on the original One X? I remember back uh, only a few months ago, they did say that they would indeed... Um, pass on the one X, and they were waiting for a five-inch phone. Um, yes. And if this does come out, and it does happen to hit Verizon with LTE and a quad-core chip setting, will it be running Jelly Bean on it? Since Jelly Bean normally will take um, possibly six, seven more months to come up to uh, be fully ready to be released, will they have it ready to put on phones by the time this phone is available? And uh, I hope to hear what you guys have to say. I appreciate it. No, because it's fake. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not um, real. Simple answer. Uh, but yeah, but there, now, was a separate, there was a separate rumor for um, that 5-inch HTC thing on Verizon, but we've heard nothing about that for months. Yeah. I'm, but, but having said that, I, I'm sure HTC is working on quad-core S4 phones sure. with LTE. I'm sure everybody is. Everybody is always working on something. Yep. Who's going to get it is the question. Well, and, and, you know, a quad core S4. I mean, yes, there's always stuff. I'm trying to think about what I've talked to a, a, Qualcomm. A quad, quad core S4 with LTE. The answer to who's going to get it is everyone. Uh, yeah. That yeah. would be a, a perfect world phone. Look at, I would look at, cycles more than anything right now and granted Verizon's in a weird place right because they skipped out on the HTC one line so I don't know um, I would expect maybe one more maybe uh, you know a couple top shelf phones from Verizon this year and remember Motorola is still lurking out there somewhere somewhere um, oh, yeah, especially they're, on, they're not dead yeah especially for Verizon but I would not expect to see something like that before next year at the earliest Maybe, you know, maybe uh, Mo World Congress next year. We'll see. So. All right, so that was Paul and not for Fernando. So now let's try Fernando. I have no Fernando. You have no Fernando? Well. I what did you do with him? I can rectify that. Give me two seconds. You have no Fernando. Let me, hey, you don't have Fernando. Here comes Fernando. Now you have Fernando. Fernando was banned by Apple. Fernando was not banned by Apple. Fernando! It's going to be good. Fernando is being downloaded by the Dropboxes. Oh my gosh, how long is that going to take? <clears throat> so, how about them Yankees? Or something. Seriously. Oh, how about Oscar the movie. Orioles? My my phone tells me everything I need to know about the <laughs> Orioles now. It's in my notification bar every every day that they lost. <laughs> really? Yep. It's you horrible. Need to tell you that? No, of course not. But they just grind it in. Google just puts dirt into the wounds. <laughs> how we doing there, Renee? You got Fernando? It has no Fernando. I feel like an ABBA song gone horribly wrong. Bizarre. All right, Fernando, we will catch back up with you next week. I promise. Don't let me forget. So with that, I think we're going to do it. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to stick a fork in it. Mickey, take us home. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can send us an email to podcast at androidcentral.com or leave a voicemail at 888-468-6158, extension 222. You can also follow all of us on Twitter. The site is at Android Central. Phil is at Phil Nickinson. I am at TCPJ underscore Mickey. Jerry is at GB Hill. Corey is at C Streeter. And Alex is at Alex Doby. You can also follow all of the writers over at Android Central. 
this podcast and the website brought to you by the Android Central Store found at shopandroid.com. You can also place orders by calling 888-468-6158. Sweet. Should we try a uh, Google Now search? What should we search for real quick? Fernando. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Face palm. Where is Fernando? Hold up. Dr. Fernando doesn't tell me what kind of doctor. Somebody here at one of the hospitals. So, see? It worked. Cool. Fernando, sorry, man. We'll get your voicemail next week. That's my fault. Ask, you can ask it how tall the Justin Bieber is, and it will tell really? you. Really? <laughs> right, yes. Let's, let's do that right now. How tall is Justin Bieber? Justin Bieber is 5 feet 7 inches tall. That's just ridiculous. And, and there he is. <laughs> it's the so I, I noticed you used a little bit of that robotic voice with it. The nice thing about this is you don't have to. Like it, that's true. It's yep. turn it off. You, you know. Yeah, you just you just talk to it. All right, that's it. That's Google now. That's patents. It's Galaxy Nexus. It's Nexus Q. It's Jelly Bean. We are back. We'll be back next week. Thank you, everybody. You guys gonna say bye or anything? Oh, bye. we can say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week. Oh, my God. Fine. Be that way. <laughs> what? Who? We said goodbye. <laughs>